what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. All types of fuel for home heating, apparently, are going to be scarce this winter. So if you heat with coal, you're fortunate. You're able to store a fuel. But get your order in early. Call your blue coal dealer tomorrow and ask him to schedule your delivery as soon as he can. And make sure that you order the right size for your furnace. If you're not sure what it should be, ask your blue coal dealer. He'll be glad to inspect your heating plant and he may be able to make other recommendations too that will help you to get more heat and to burn less fuel. So first thing tomorrow, call the nearest blue coal dealer and ask him about scheduling an early delivery of your blue coal. The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Ruby of Carval. Five centuries ago, A forgotten king of Siam pronounced a curse on a fabulous ruby which graced the palace throne room in the ancient city of Carval. If man's greed shall ever remove this jewel, it shall become an instrument of catastrophe and destruction. From this hour forward, death awaits the thief who takes from its rightful owner the ruby of Cabal. Of course, in time, the ruby was stolen, and for hundreds of years it changed hands until, a few months ago, it became the property of one Hugo Zara, wealthy and famous theatrical star. Nobody, Zara included, paid any heed to the legend of the ancient curse. And yet, one stormy night, where the main highway passes through a small village. Look, Joe! Joe, will you look what's there in the road? Good Lord! Joe, Joe, look out! goes on here? It's been an accident, officer. Well, I didn't figure it for a lawn festival. Who was in the car? Two guys, officer. You see, we was in the bar across the Where's road. Where's the guys now? They're still in the car. Yeah, they're dead, officer. Both of them. They was coming down the road like grease lightning. Why, you'd have thought they were on the lamb from something. Listen, here comes another car. Flag them, will you? Ah, uh, you don't have to flag them. They're stopping. It's there, Carl Lamont. Okay, Margot. Come on, Commissioner. All right, officer. I'll take over. You will, huh? Then who are you? My name's Weston. You may have heard of me. I'm Commissioner of Police. Oh, oh Commissioner Weston. Excuse me, sir. I didn't... Forget it. This is Lamont Cranston, Miss Margot Lane. How do you do? I'm glad to know you. I was just going to open the car and... Well, don't let me stop you. Yes, sir. Jeez. Uh... Slip away, Margot. They got theirs, all right. It was coming to them. You knew these two guys? Yes, we knew them. Who are they? One on the right was Bags Huggins, stooge and gunman for the one behind the wheel. Oh, who's he? Wouldn't recognize him in the shape he's in, but he used to be Moonlight Joe. Moonlight Joe? You mean that phantom second story character? The one the papers call a modern raffles? The same. Was he on some kind of a job? Yes. His last one. But well, what was he after this time, you know? Yes, I know. I think you'll find it in his inner coat pocket. Yeah? Well, just a second. I... Gee, what's that? That, my friend, is the ruby of Carval. 
It sounds like big stuff. I'd like to get a few details here for my report. Is it okay, Commissioner? Go ahead, Lamont. Tell them what you know. Well, what I know is this. Started early tonight. Started with a theatrical makeup artist, world famous one named Carl Manners. As I understand it, he was about to retire for the night. Who's that? Who's there? Well, what do you want? One side, Manners. But I... You heard the man move. Gentlemen, please, it's quite late. I was on my way to bed. Right down, I will put you to bed for good. Who are you? Me? My name is Huggins. They call me Moonlight Joe. Moonlight Joe? Oh, I see. This is some kind of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of oh. joke. Get the idea, Manners? What do you want? Joe wants you to do one of your makeup jobs, that's all. And it won't be too tough. I look something like him already. Like who? The man you've worked for for the last ten years. Hugo Zara. You... You do it. That same build, same color. I've been watching his movies. I got his voice down to a T. And now, well, you're going to give me his face. What for? That's my business. Your business wouldn't include an interest in one of Zara's possessions, would it? Maybe. The ruby of Carvel? This guy needs... Now, to... take it easy, Huggins. I don't mind if he guesses the angle. In fact, I'm going to tell him the whole story. Joe, are you... You were right, Manners. I want that ruby. In fact, I've already made a few tries at it, but it's not easy. So I've decided to try a dynamite shot. I hit on an idea that includes a job of makeup. I'm going to impersonate Hugo Zara. You're going to make me look as much like him as one guy can look like another. And? Zara's out of town. He'll be out of town for a couple of days. I'm going to walk right into that fabulous joint of his and take my time finding that ruby. What are you telling me all this for? Because now you know too much. Maybe you've been around enough to understand what happens when a guy knows too much. I see. Okay, then get to work. Gentlemen, Get I... to work. Put that gun away. He will. After you've made me look like Zara, just like Zara. But exactly. <laughs> Uh, you all finished? Yes. How is it, Huggins? Turn around. Let me see. Uh. Hey. Jeez. You scared me. You're Zara, Joe. Ain't you anymore. You're Zara. It's that good, then. It's huh? terrific. The professor here is sensational. Okay, then. We blow. Remember, Manners, from here on out, breathe through your nose. What? Uh, Huggins means you'll be healthier with your mouth closed. And how long will you two be healthy? What? Huh? Perhaps you don't know it. But there's a death curse on that particular stone you're after. Is that so? A death curse 500 years old. Oh, you give me the shake. Yeah, you scare us to death. (laughs) What's the matter, Huggins? Did you hear something, boss? Me? No. Sounded like a big bell. Must be hearing things. Well, cut it out. Just keep hearing the way he'll sound. Who? The fence. When he offers us a quarter of a million dollars for the ruby of... This living room looks like Yankee Stadium. Some nest there has got himself in. What are you whispering for? We got the place all to ourselves. You sure there ain't somebody at home? What do I care if there is? I'm Zara. Yeah, but we broke in that window. So what? I forgot my latch key. That's easy. Listen. Car stopped All outside. All right, take it easy. This probably Zara's wife, Lorna. Yeah, look through the window. It's a dame and some guy. Huh? Yeah, brother Charles. He lives here with us. Joe, if they find out you broke the switch box and blew all the lights in the, the joint... The storm did that, Huggins, a storm. Besides, this makeup looks better by candlelight. Here they come. My knees are knocking. What's the matter with you? I'm Zara. I came home unexpectedly. You're a friend of mine. Now, come on, come on. We're going to meet him. You reckon you can put this over, Joe? Hey, you just watch me. Come on in, Charles. Yes, dear. I'll make it some hot tea. Lorna! Hugo! Why, I hadn't expected you back so soon, Hugo. And I changed my plan. Oh, well, what happened to the light, Hugo? Uh, the storm. You better get some more candles, Charles. Uh, 
This is Mr. Huggins. How do you do? How I'm do you pleased do? to meet your acquaintance, I'm sure. I'm putting Mr. Huggins up in the guest room, Lorna. He's here on business. I'm selling him a ruby of Caval. Selling it? You heard me. I mean, yes, I've decided to let Mr. Huggins bid for it. <laughs> I want you to get it out and show it to him. But Hugo... Don't, don't argue. Just get it. Well, I'll see here. Do as uh... Hugo says, Charles. You, you changed the hiding place this morning, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes, I did. No, where is it? Upstairs. Uh, Huggins will go with you, Charles. Oh, really, he doesn't need I to go. I said he would go upstairs with you. Now, who could that be? I don't know. We weren't expecting anyone, were you? Who, me? Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't expecting anyone. Well, we'd better let them in. No, no, wait a minute, Lorna. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to disturb you. My name is Lamont Frank. The storm washed our part of the road on a car stop, and we're late for a weekend party. This is Miss Margot Lane. Come in. Thanks. We'd like to use your telephone, may we? They want to use the phone, Hugo. Picked a fine time. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, yes, yes, let them use the phone. Well, Lamont, look. Well, what do you know? You're Hugo Zara, aren't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes. I've seen you many times. Always found you work very interesting. And the phone is down the hall to your left. Uh, will you show them, Lorna? Of course. Thank you very much. Come on, Margaret. Well, Charles? Uh, yes? You're going to get something upstairs. Remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. So I was. Uh, yes, go on up with him, Mr. Huggins, and I'll go back in the pantry and mix us all a drink. This way, Mr. Huggins. What do I do, Joe? Grab the ruby the minute he shows it to you. And then we get out of this joint. It's getting crowded. Coming, Mr. Huggins. I'm right behind you, Charles. Right this way, Mr. Huggins. Sorry to put you to this trouble, Charles. Oh, no, I don't mind, really. In fact, I, for one, would be mighty glad if you bought the ruby of Caval. It's been death, sudden death, for too many of its owners. Just step inside, won't you? Uh, it's a little dark. Oh, yes, of course. I'll, I'll light a lamp. There's one here on the desk. Of course, I don't believe in uh, superstitious nonsense like legends and curses, do you? No. No, they're obviously ridiculous. But, on the other hand... Oh! Joe! Joe, you did it too soon! He ain't showed me where the ruby is yet! Joe! Joe, is that you? We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. Friends, you're missing plenty if you don't have a blue cold temp master heat regulator on your furnace. You are missing the wonderful work-saving ease that automatic temperature control gives. You're missing the even, steady, healthful heat that could be yours. And you're missing the big savings in fuel that a temp master makes possible. Altogether, you're missing the carefree heating comfort you should have. But why wait any longer? Call the nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to demonstrate the new blue coal temp master. They're not expensive. There is no charge or obligation for the demonstration. The temp master is an entirely new kind of automatic heat regulator. The electric eye thermostat upstairs, a blue coal development, keeps your home exactly at the temperature you set on the dial, eliminating all those trips to the basement to adjust dampers. Furnace controls are operated automatically as needed, and the electric eye thermostat actually shows you the exact position of those dampers. This winter, save fuel, save trouble, and get much better, much more healthful heat with a Blue Coal Temp Master. Only Blue Coal dealers have them. Blue Coal dealers are listed in the classified section of your telephone book. Call the nearest Blue Coal dealer and ask him for a demonstration of the Temp Master tomorrow. And now, back to the shadow. <laughs> Margot and Lamont are in the home of the wealthy actor Hugo Zara, owner of the fabulous Ruby of Carval, when suddenly from upstairs they hear the sound of a gunshot. Cranston dashes up the stairs with Margot and Mrs. Zara close behind him. Shot came from this room in here. Hold the candelabra up, Margot. There, Charles. Is he dead? I don't think so, but it looks bad. Charles. Charles, who fired those shots? Who was it? Don't, 
Don't. He's slipping fast. Mr. Cranston, ask him where the ruby is. Ruby of Carval? Yes, yes, ask him quick. Where's the ruby, Charles? Charles, Charles, where is it? Where is it? Back where it belongs. Back where it belongs? What does it mean? I don't know. Perhaps we'll never know now. He's dead. But who could have killed him? That remains to be seen, Mrs. Zara. Hello, now, that... what's going on? Charles. I'm afraid we've had a tragedy here, Zara. So I see. Where's the ruby? We don't know. You don't know? Charles changed the hiding place this morning. He hasn't told me where. According to your brother-in-law's last words, the ruby's perfectly safe, Mr. Zara. Safe? But where? All he said was it was back where it belongs. Oh, he was delirious. The ruby is somewhere in this house. Charles probably made a note of the ruby's hiding place. Oh, maybe that was it. What was it, Mark? This paper... When we heard that shot and ran up the stairs, I happened to see a piece of paper on the stairway carpet. It just occurred to me maybe Charles dropped it. He'd just gone up there. Now let me see that paper, Miss Lane. Oh, I picked it up. Where'd that put it? It's not there. No, and not here. Well, I guess I must have dropped it in the excitement. Well, come on. We'll trace your steps and have a look. Well, find it. Find it. That's a quarter of a million dollars worth of rubies. Relax, Mr. Sarah. We'll, we'll do our best. By the way, what's happened to Mr. Huggins? Well, how do I know? Probably packing the leave. Where would he be packing? You said you put him in the guest room, didn't you, Hugo? Oh, in the guest room. Yes, 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 I did. Thank you. Come on, Margot. Any idea who killed Charles Lamont? Not yet, but I soon will have. What do you mean? I mean you're going to look for the missing paper alone, darling. I'm putting in a call to Commissioner Weston. And then? Then a gentleman named Huggins is going to receive a visit from the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Who left? Who's there? <laughs> hey, what goes on here? First I hear bells when there ain't none. Now there's a laugh and there's nobody laughing. There's nobody here but me. A shadow is here, Mr. Huggins. Sir? I'm right beside you. Uh, I've searched this house for you and here I find you leaving by a window. Why? I don't want no trouble, that's why. Why should you have trouble, Huggins? Well, I, uh... I'll tell you why. You murdered Charles. I didn't. We just walked into that room and all of a sudden there was a shot and he went down. Who fired that shot? I, I don't know. You're lying, Huggins. Who are you really? What are you doing here? Talk. All right. All right, we came here to get the ruby. Who is we? Me and... Oh. You're all right now, darling. You're safe. Oh, Lamont, I, I came down the stairs looking for the paper. Yes? There was a dark figure here at the bottom of the landing. It had its back to me, and I started to speak. It, it knocked the candle out of my hand. Before I could move, there were fingers around my throat. I, I guess I fainted. It's a good guess, darling. Who was he? Who was he, Lamont? Well, I'm not sure, Margot. Uh, listen... Seems we have more visitors. Stay here, Margot. I'll see who it is. Be careful. I always am, darling. Well? Where is he? Where is he? Who are you? My name is Manners. Carl Manners, the makeup expert. Is he here? Is who here? Moonlight Joe. You mean Moonlight Joe is here in this house? Yes, but you'd never recognize him. I made him up to look exactly like Hugo Zara. You... What was the idea? Zara went out of town for a few days, and Moonlight Joe wanted to get into the house masquerade as Zara and have plenty of time to locate the ruby of Carval. I see. Now, I just found out that Zara isn't out of town. What? A cab driver at the railroad station of the village just told me that he brought the real Hugo Zara to this house around 8 o'clock this evening. He changed his plans, he said. When I heard that, I realized that if Moonlight Joe ran afoul of the real Zara, he'd kill him in cold blood. How well do you know Zara, Mr. Manners? I've worked for him for the past 10 years. Where does he spend most of his time when he's at home? In his study on the second floor. In his... That's Mrs. Zara. What is it? Mr. Cranston, help me! Where are you? Second floor of my husband's study. I left Hugo in the room where my brother was killed and came here to the study to see if perhaps Charles had made some notes about the ruby. Yes, go on. When I opened the door, there was Hugo sitting behind the desk. You were amazed, of course. Of course. I just left him a few seconds ago, and I, I didn't see how he could have gotten here. Oh, Mr. Cranston, he, he's 
dead. Don't please, Mrs. Zell. <laughs> it may not be your husband at all. What do you mean? There's a man in this house masquerading as your husband. <laughs> is that true? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Zell. What do you mean, Manners? This face isn't made up. This is the real Hugo Zara. <laughs> Mrs. Zara, please. Manners. Yes, Mr. Grant. Are you armed? No. Take this revolver and stay with Mrs. Zara. You and she comb the upper story. Miss Lane and I will cover the lower floors and exits. We're not letting Moonlight Joe and his friend Huggins leave this house. <laughs> Stay beside me, Margot. Do you think they're still here, Lamar? I'm sure Moonlight Joe is. But wouldn't he have left? No, he hasn't found the ruby yet. And if I judge Moonlight Joe correctly, he's a very persistent fellow. You're sure he killed Zara and Charles? Well, he's a likely man to ask a few questions, Margot. On the other hand, there's a foolish idea that has crossed my mind. What's that? There's a curse on the ruby of Carval, you know. Lamont, you're not suggesting that a king of Siam from 500 years ago walked into this house and killed two men with a revolver. No, I suppose perhaps he could walk into the house if he chose. But I doubt that a king of five centuries ago would know how to fire a revolver. Oh, you're being ridiculous. If you ask me... Lamont. What is it? I found it. Found what, Lamont? piece of paper. The one I picked up on the stairs. Where did it been? Of all places. Instead of putting it in my pocket, in the excitement, I tucked it under my belt. Well, here, let me see it. Here. Hmm. Is it the directions to the ruby? No. No, it's a letter. Letter? Yes, it dated years ago. Oh, what does it say? It says that the... That came from upstairs. I know where it came from. I've been a fool, Margot, a stupid fool. What do you mean? I'll explain when there's time. Right now, I want you to get up to the room where Charles was murdered. What do I do when I get there? Just walk in and wait for me. All right. And don't worry. The shadow will be standing by. Miss Lane. Mr. Manners, I just... Mrs. Zara. She's dead, Miss Lane. What happened, Mr. Manners? He killed her. Who? Moonlight Joe. He walked into the room and he was waiting for us with his gun in his hand. No. Yes, he demanded that Lorna tell him where the ruby of Carval was, and when she refused, he killed her. Well, that's strange. That he'd kill her? Yes. Why? He knew she didn't know where the ruby was, Mr. Manning. Charles hadn't told her where he put it before he died. I see. When you think of it, it's strange that Moonlight Joe should have killed either Charles or Mr. Zara. He's here to get the ruby, not to commit murder. He could have stolen it long ago if he'd wanted to kill everybody in the house to get it. Mm-hmm. You're a clever young woman in many ways, Miss Lane. Am I? But you could be clever. How? You could be discreet enough to keep out of the middle of things that don't concern you. Why, Mr. Manners? Why? You've had one lesson, Miss Lane. Maybe this one will show you why. Mr. Manners! Mr. Manners! Maybe no. you'll hesitate next time before you... <laughs> Shadow! Who's there? I'm the Shadow. <laughs> Where are you? Here in this room, though you can't see me. What do you want here? To accuse you, Manners, of being the dark figure on the stairs who strangled Miss Lane a few moments ago. I didn't hurt her. But you hurt others. You've murdered others. You go Zara, Charles, and Lorna. It was Moonlight, Joe. He came here to get the ruby and he killed them all. He didn't kill them, though, Manners. You'd hope we'd blame him because you wanted to get rid of the Zara household for your own reasons. What are you talking about? You'd known the Zara family for years, Manners, long before it was a family. You were in love with Lorna before Zara took her away from you and married her. That's not true. The letter Miss Lane found on the stairs proves it's true, Manners. It's a letter written in the heat of frustrated love 20 years ago, threatening to kill Zara, Lorna, and her socially ambitious brother, Charles. That's a lie. When you finally saw the chance to keep your threats and frame Moonlight Joe, you grabbed it. You shot Zara... Then remembered those incriminating letters, found them in his desk, and took them along. Your one slip was that you dropped this one and left it for us to find. So you know. Well, maybe we can do business, Shadow. Let me out of this house. Give me a chance to leave the country. And if I do? I won't kill Miss Lane. Shadow! Put on that gun! If I can make the deal, Shadow. I'm afraid you can't. Then I'm afraid I'll have to shoot. Manners! Thanks, Weston. You came right on cue. Well, I thought I'd better shoot first and ask questions later. Good thinking, Commissioner. But where were you when I walked in, Cranston? I didn't see you. Oh, 
Well, it's uh, pretty dark, you know, just these lamps. Some kind of shenanigans, if you ask me. Well, did you find the ruby? Not yet, but I think I know where it is. Where, Lamont? You see a volume there on the bookshelf, Margaret, called The Palaces of Siam. Yes? Uh, take it down. Oh, it isn't a book. It's a gift box that the book came in. It... Look inside. That's Who's it. There? The ruby of Carval. Charles said he'd put it where it belonged, and that's where it was. The palaces of Siam, see? Here we speak, uh, Francis. Stand where you are, everybody. Well, I don't. I've just been waiting, biding my time like a nice boy. You turn the ruby up for me. Take it, Huggins. Okay, Joe. And don't bother to tell me you won't get away with this, Commissioner, because I've got away with plenty before. Come on, Huggins. Make for the car. This was the one Moonlight Joe didn't get away with, as you can see, by the two bodies there in the car. And so, officer, that's the story. There's this one thing I don't get. There wasn't no blowout. They didn't skid. They wasn't drunk. And still, all of a sudden, it looks like this Moonlight Joe just deliberately swerved into that concrete pool. I think Margot picked up something off the road while I was talking, didn't you, darling? Yes. What was it? Well, it looks like the strap off a girl's sandal. Sandal, eh? Well, that's the kind of shoes they wore, all right. Who? Oh. The ancient kings of Siam? Lamont, don't be ridiculous. Could it have been possible that Joe swerved because he saw a very strange figure looming ahead on the road? The figure of an oriental king? Uh, Lamont, that Siamese king has been dead for 500 years. Still, he pronounced a curse of death on whoever stole the ruby of Carval from its rightful owners. And here are Joe and Huggins, dead. You don't really believe he could have been here on this road in 1947? I don't know, Margo. It's hard to know just what to believe. And now, let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority, John Bartley. Thank you, Andre Baruch, and good evening, friends. If I were asked to name the three most important ways to save fuel, I'd say first, a clean furnace, second, correct firing, and third, weather spreading. You see, a clean furnace is essential because deposits of soot or fly ash on the heating surfaces act the same as wrapping them in asbestos. So make sure the heating surfaces in your furnace are clean. Next, always maintain a deep fire bed. Keep the fire up to the level of the firing door. A deep fire bed retards the flow of draft and causes the fire to burn slowly and evenly. Third, weather stripping. Little open cracks or loose windows can lose a lot of heat. This winter, make sure that you get all the heat you're entitled to from the coal you burn. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station.